This is AM 650's The Law Show with Sterling Fox. Now back to the show. Good to have you with us this Sunday morning. Our guests in studio on The Law Show are David Hobbs and Ian Girodi from Hobbs Girodi in Vancouver. Our guests are estate litigation lawyers with offices in downtown Vancouver right across the street from the courthouse. Uh, we're talking wills and estates and the issue of competency, which is, a, as it turns out, is, is rather a, a significant uh, issue. And uh, I wanted to ask a couple of sort of what-if type questions of you. Uh, for example, if uh, an individual makes a will that is immediately subject to some questioning from uh, family members, etc., and it's determined that that person was not competent to make that will in the first place, and then the person dies, and there wasn't any other will that preceded it, and we now know that that person wasn't competent to make a will. So what what happens then, David Hobbs? What where do the uh, the dependents or descendants of that individual go for resolution of the estate? Well, in your example, the the person has made a will. There's an issue as to whether they were competent or not. So it really then engages this whole discussion of um, if that will is not valid, is there an earlier will? Right. Or is there no will? This is the intestacy or earlier will discussion, and that's to determine who would benefit from the person's estate if this questionable will is, turns out to be invalid. Okay, so now so, it is invalid, and now we now know there's no will. So what then? So, well, the intestacy depends on, uh, firstly, looking at whether there's a spouse, whether there's children. If not, then you go through the, uh, the various sections of the Estate Administration Act moving down the food chain, mm -hmm. so to speak. Right. So we're looking at, are there parents? Are there brothers and sisters? Are there nephews and nieces? And so on, eventually mm -hmm. getting to the generational level that that will be interested in in the intestacy i.e. they have an interest in the estate and those are the people who might challenge the validity of the will and if successful would benefit from that challenge okay uh, Ian, what about a case where uh, the the uh, executor has a big job in any uh, probate uh, procedure because that person was requested by the now deceased will maker to please look after my affairs after I'm gone. And there and you, I know at Hobbs Girodi, uh, spend a lot of time advising executors because these are civilians. They're not lawyers. They don't know what to do. They were doing a friend a favor for a friend and said, "Sure, I'll be your executor," and I didn't think anything about it. 10 years ago, and all of a sudden, uh-oh, now I'm on the hook. I'm, I've got to do stuff. And they, uh, and Hobbs Girodi, uh, does provide advice to executors. So uh, when someone calls you uh, that has been, for example, named as an executor and doesn't have a clue what to do, uh, is, there, is there a course that you take? Is, can you go online and, and learn the facts? Or exactly how do you get yourself up to scratch to be an, a good executor? Right. So... So there's, there are lots of self-help guides um, around being an executor or, or an administrator of an estate. Um, and, of course, you can rely upon um, lawyers to assist you to uh, go through the probate application to help you understand um, what's involved, you know, that you have to gather in, determine what the assets of the estate are, right. gather them in, right. pay the creditors, um, prepare certain court documents to prove the will, so that you actually have standing now as the as the executor, um, distribute to the beneficiaries and so forth. So yeah, there's there there are there are uh, lots of resources out there, and and certainly you can you can use uh, a lawyer to help you out with probate, and you can use accountants to help you out with the uh, you know the filing the tax returns sure, with right. any complex assets like uh, privately held companies, that sort of thing. One of the duties of an executor is to notify all of the people named in the will that uh, this has happened and all that sort of thing. What happens, and I'm sure, David, you've had this happen to you when people come to Hobbs Girodi going, well, you know, I'm named in this will, but for some reason or another, I never received notice that my dad or uh, my family member had, had died. And uh, so... Uh, the executor is responsible for notifying individuals, correct? Well, the the people that receive notice are those named in the will. Right. But then it's also uh, people who, who have rights vis-a-vis -vis the estate, which they may or may not exercise. What do I mean by that? Well, if there was a son or a daughter of the deceased, they're not named in the will, they have a right to apply to vary that will. 
And so the purpose behind the notice is it must go to them. And, and what's underlying that is once they have noticed there's an application for probate, then they know or ought to know that when the probate's granted, they're going to have six months to bring their wills variation action. Okay. So it's really to put them on notice that if they're intending on doing that, this is going on and there's a time period and so on. Other people that have notice might be uh, people who would take on an intestacy and they have notice and that tells them that if they wish to challenge the validity of the will, they better get on with that because this will is going to eventually be probated and the estate's going to be distributed. So it's the people in the will and also the people that might have rights that they wish to exercise regarding that estate, they all get notice, and that's the purpose behind it. Ian, what happens in the case, and I'm sure this has crossed your desk more than a few times, what happens in the case of the secret love child, the the (laughs) child of the deceased who uh, is unknown, perhaps, to other family members? and yet is a biological descendant of the of the will maker who may not have been named in the will for perhaps obvious reasons this right. is this is a, an affair that happened 20 years ago and i've done my best to keep it out, uh, under the, under wraps and all of a sudden this individual is going hey what about me what do they do right so that person as a biological son or daughter yeah is entitled to notice of the of an application for probate or administration of the estate so, um, uh, in your scenario, it doesn't sound like the executor or administrator is going to be aware of this. Person. Exactly right. Um, so, if this person came into our our office, um, first we'd want to uh, to know whether they received notice of an application for probate or administration, um, because if they didn't, then we're uh, we're immediately looking at at a scenario where we may be able to upset any limitation period that might apply to their ability to bring a wills variation claim. Right. Because right. as as a biological child, they can bring a wills variation claim. In an intestacy, they're entitled as a child to receive a portion of the estate. Okay. Um, now, they may come in because they, uh, fairly shortly after the death, because they were aware of it for some reason. And, uh, you know, these limitation periods might not uh, be at play. Uh, in which case, you know, we we're, uh, our job is to get notice out to the executor that there's um, there's someone out here who has an interest either in this intestate estate or um, will be bringing a wills variation claim. Now, I don't imagine, David, that people the other people who would be named in that estate to benefit or to be beneficiaries of the estate are particularly interested in sharing with a stranger, albeit the fact that they may be biologically related. Do they contest this? Do people in the family go, wait a second, this is some, uh, you know, this is a result of a, an unfortunate affair 20 years ago. This person has never been part of our lives or part of our family. So why on earth should he or she step in at the 11th hour and take away a percentage of what is rightfully mine? That's precisely what they're going to say, and and it's an interesting question, and you can imagine, you know, the estranged or uh, long-lost child, uh, maybe the father behaved badly, uh, left uh, a woman and child to look after themselves, never paid maintenance, and never cared for them, to sort of dump them, so to speak, on the street many, many years ago. That might be one story. Or, or on the other hand, there may have been secret or quiet maintenance payments going on on the side that, again, no one knew about. But in these cases, the reason why and the background surrounding this uh, unknown child um, will be investigated uh, to determine whether or not the, the deceased owed a, a duty to this person and uh, and uh, didn't fulfill that duty and the person should be part of their estate distribution as a, as a matter of moral or, or legal entitlement. I imagine the fights can get pretty <clears throat> colorful though, right? Oh, sure. And, and then you can understand the logic of family members who've had a parent and maybe they've all grown up together and lived together for many, many years, never knew about this other person. You can understand their attitude towards this person coming along late in the day but when you look at it from the other perspective you can see their attitude as well that they've they've been sort of hard done by and and feel that they're owed something. I've been neglected all my life and now I'm going to be neglected in in the death of my parent as well. So, right. Yeah, you can see it from both sides of the coin. Right, and, and uh, but again, there would be a real determination, I think, not to have a lifelong, uh, lifetime of rejection to to go for some validation at some point, wouldn't there? Uh, it, it's funny. There is, uh, I would say, there's definitely an emotional component to to that, and a, a sense of um, um, 
you know, wanting to be recognized. Absolutely. Our guests in studio, David Hobbs and Ian Girodi from the Vancouver estate litigation firm Hobbs Girodi downtown. This is The Law Show on AM650, and we'll be back with lots more right after this. There's more of the show still ahead. This is AM650's The Law Show.